Hello everyone, um, Brindy Harless, I'm doing a lab video for the Art Stew, I'm going to be doing a few things live, um, maybe, we'll see how long I'm on here. If I'm on here long enough, I wanted to show you a little bit of everything since I do a little bit of everything, so as people join, I'll probably re-explain that, but since this will be posted again later, I thought I'd just go ahead and let you know what this video is. So, I'm going to get started probably pretty soon. Just to get moving. For anybody who's just jumping on, this is a prompt for the Art Stew. Um, the dreamer prompt. I'm a little bit behind on prompts because pretty much April, May, and now July or June. Skipped a month. June. I've been crazy, so I missed a few prompts. So I've been getting to go crazy and catch up on them. And this is for dreamer. And I just wanted to do something really lighthearted and sweet and fun. And I'm gonna be doing watercolors. I was thinking about doing gouache, but I don't. I've literally never done gouache before, so I figured I'd just do what I know for the video. Hello. Okay, so I'm thinking, thinking I want to do red hair on this little girl, rosy cheeks, and some cute, pretty saturated clothing. So I'm gonna get started. I sketched this earlier with Birdie while we were watching some of her little movies. Let's see. I don't really have a distinct plan for this, so y'all will just get to watch it as it happens. Hopefully some people will be able to join. And if y'all have any questions, this video, this whole video is just totally open to Requests, questions, conversation, anything, I am where I can see comments, so feel free to comment. This is phase one. I wanted to give a little taste of pretty much everything I do in this live video tonight. So first we're going to start with painting because that is what I've done the longest and what I do the most of. So... Can't go wrong with that. Let's see. Some music playing. I pretty much always listen to music while I paint. It just feels um, too still, too quiet otherwise. Kind of gets me in whatever mindset I want to be in for each illustration. So first I'm just going to go in with some darker kind of ruby red and then I'll throw in some coppers because I really love the mixture of copper and red in illustrations and in actual hair. For anyone who doesn't know, I am a cosmetologist. So I'm dealing with hair every day, all the time, and my favorite thing to do with hair is color. So I really like to create kind of faux natural redheads. You would not believe how many people actually want to be, have wanted to be a redhead all their life. Like I personally always wanted to be a redhead, especially when I was younger. I always wanted to be a redhead with cute freckles and green eyes and course I was born with the hair of a dead field mouse so that's what color is for and what my job is and let's see how fast I can get this hair outlined Try not to be too much of a perfectionist, just so this doesn't take forever. Sometimes I kind of get think I'm going fast and think I'm doing a pretty good job of moving along until I look at the clock and it's been like hours, but it feels like it's been like 30 minutes. I'm 
What are y'all doing tonight while y'all watch this video? Journaling. Oh, I love journaling. I used to journal so much, especially in when I was in high school. So I was kind of a homebody. And I really loved to write when I was younger. I guess I don't know if I had more time or just hadn't really tapped into all the other things I keep myself busy with now. But I used to just write like all day, every day. I had like a big stack of journals by my bed, all of different categories. And now I do have one journal by my bed, but I keep forgetting to to write. But I feel like it's such an awesome thing to keep a journal, whether it's just with fictional ideas or documenting actual life happening. I journaled my entire pregnancy with my daughter, Aurora, and it's so sweet now to look back on that journal and see like what I was thinking before I had her and all the things I was wanting to know about her, like what she would look like and stuff, and now I know, she's here. Do you bullet journal, or just kind of write freely, or what kind of journaling do you do? Sorry if you'll hear like a lot of noise. I have to have a fan running in here because my studio is like the hottest room in the house by a million degrees. Oh, that's a good idea to bullet a few things from each day. I like, I like to bullet journal too, but I feel like I have to be in a certain season of life to really be successful at it because sometimes when life is just chaos, I'm not good, and then other times it's like... I'm so strict and I keep it like down to the to a T like every day never forget to do an entry but it's really satisfying like once you fill out a lot of a bullet journal hey Ray you're finally here we're talking about bullet journaling and if can you hear a fan in the background Ray I like don't want it to be, I can suffer in the heat of my little studio if it's really loud and making a horrible windy noise. making a windy noise. I'll just turn it away from me and turn it down. I was telling them it's like our house is kind of old and it's not insulated yet because it's kind of a fixer upper and when we got it it was just a train wreck. So we haven't insulated it yet and it is so hot in my office for some reason. Like every other room in the house stays so cool but it's like there's no airflow in here. Plus I have my lamp on so the colors don't get all like washed out and look terrible in the fluorescent light so that thing is like a heat lamp that you put on baby chickens so I'm going to move on from the hair um, this ray is my contribution to the dreamer prompt I'm catching up on that and I just wanted to do like a little girl laying in the grass just daydreaming and um, kind of inspired since you're probably the only person who actually knows the story of Bryony. Kind of inspired by Bryony, my fictional character when she was a little girl. Um, I was asking them too, like, what everybody's doing tonight while they watch this.
Gotta get that brow gain strong. I've been in a habit lately of putting darker colors in first instead of light. I know it's probably like the opposite of what I need to be doing, but yeah, go ahead. Post away. I want to get a lot of people on here so we can all talk and hang out. Drawing a birthday gift. I love that. I do that too now. Like anytime somebody needs a gift, I make it instead of buy it. Both because I'm broke and because I can, and it's more special, I think. Hmm. Any suggestions on the color of this dress? I'm going to do some green um, florals and grass in the background on the end, so I'm thinking not green. Maybe yellow? I'll do yellow. I like yellow. I never wear yellow for some reason, but I really love painting with yellow. Yeah, I was thinking yellow or blue. But I've been very much leaning towards like a warm color palette lately, and I think it's because I'm starting to get really really eager for fall to be here so I've been like going with like unintentionally being drawn towards a fall color palette like here in the last two weeks probably oh and just so y'all know what I'm painting with this is a little watercolor kit I got on eBay I don't even remember what it is um it comes with a little tray you can put on the side i don't even remember what brand it is let me see if it's on the box but it is amazing and it came with this brush so it's yeah it literally doesn't say not anywhere on the box does it say the brand name i also have a little winsor newton palette but it's it's like a very limited color palette so um and it's so, it's like literally tiny let me show you so I don't use it a whole lot at home, but I do keep it in my backpack and use it a lot when I'm out and about. Do I have my phone plugged in? No, I need to. Let me go get my charger. This is the Winsor Newton palette, and it came with this cute little brush. I always like when things are miniature, so even though I don't use it as much, it's my favorite. Look at that. That is the cutest little thing ever. But I'm painting with the other one I got. It's just got a ton of pre-made pre color options. Let me go get my charger. Y'all just stare at this girl for a while. charger. Let me see if it'll reach. I just got a new phone and I'm not used to the length of this new charger cord. I thought it would be extra long because it's newer, but it's not. Okay, it worked. Pretty sure it's... it is now charging. Thank you so much, Ray, for reminding me. I literally would have just let my phone die again. Oh my god, I know. I was so sad that time because the one that it saved was like, okay, but the one that it didn't save and that it died on was the one where we were all talking about like really 
intense, awesome, artistic stuff, and it wasn't just, like, small chit-chat. The non-awkward part was lost to death of phone. And then the awkward part was, like, there forever, of course. So I'm doing this one, as you can tell, like really quick, and really um, breezy. I'm taking a tip from Rachel Huffington and just not obsessing over control. Because I feel like you c that's just so not aligned with the prompt, Dreamer, to be like freaking out about the way things look. So I'm just going to be easy with it. Easy breezy. And let me see. If I mention her in a comment, will it like... Like, can, is it possible to tag people in this video? Oh, also I'm supposed to pin my name, huh? I don't know if it's going to let me do it. I'm gonna just try. Did it work? Try to do mine. Like I said, I just got this new phone, so I'm kind of having to start fresh, which is a terrible thing for somebody who already is incapable. Why is it not letting us tag her? I've seen people get tagged and stuff, I feel. Like, will it let me pin this? Hold down. I'm holding it down, and it's showing like a shadow over it, and it's not... Yeah, it's not doing it. Maybe it's my new phone. Tap it. Tap. Oh, yep, yeah, it's just a tap. It was just like, stop holding me down and just be normal. It worked. Cool. Okay, now I'm going to throw in some coppers, like I said, because I'm obsessed with the warm palette right now. So I'm going to throw it in there. Also, I need to get this one. Oh yeah, that's going to be cute. So earlier I was talking about in the stories um, being discouraged. And um, I think like half the time I'm like wildly confident in my artwork. And then half the time I'm like just a total goober about it, like acting like I'm so not happy with it and so critical of it and just acting all pathetic and annoying to myself, but um, yeah, recently, oh thank you, me too, I think it just looks happy and free, but um, yeah, recently I was like, I even was like venting to my husband Cody and I was just like, oh my god, I'm so 
just not happy with where I'm at with art. Um, mostly with art is what was really bugging me. Like, I like doing hair, and it's really important to me. That is my day job, so it's important to me to do my best and make money and be successful in a sense at that just for my family's sake. Um, and because I'm, like, competitive and I don't want to lose at anything. So, like I said, I just feel like I'm losing right now. I just feel like I can't get ahead. I feel like I'm going backwards with everything instead of getting better. Like, I'm, I should be, like, leaps and bounds from where I started at with art. Like, even earlier this year, I should just be, like, so much better right now. And I feel like, if anything, I'm just not quite up to par. And, um... It was really bugging me, and he was like, okay, well, I think you're doing great, and he was like, have you been, like, a, putting as much time into it? Like, he was, like, being rational and um, and just being encouraging, and I was just like, yes, but it's just not very good. I'm just not as good as I used to be, and um, nobody wants it. Like, the last time I went live, um, one of the great conversations that was lost was when I was talking about um, the first time I ever was selling commissioned work. Um, it was literally kind of an accident. Like, I, I mean, it wasn't an accident because I was hoping that I would sell um, some artwork in order to pay my way through school, but I was not expecting it. It was literally the last thing I expected to make, like, a substantial amount of money off of it. So it was like this wonderful, pleasant surprise that all these people wanted my artwork and wanted to own it, wanted to have like custom. It was just this awesome thing. I was so like revved up and all excited. And like the second I posted it on Facebook, like a billion people, at the, I mean, I literally would have, have like orders going at once at all times, pretty much like just constant custom orders. And I had like, I was doing custom birds on hymns people just really loved it and then I was doing um like I would do people's initials on a hymn on like their favorite hymn and then um do like really pretty florals around it things like that and um it just really took off it was so easy I didn't have to try it all and then this time I'm like years later so much more I would I would say I'm more skilled I literally have more skills now than I had then and um, way more experience way more um, just I'm just more capable like you could give me kind of like any any kind of um, subject and I would be able to do some form of it like my own interpretation of it and then at that time, I had such a limited and small arsenal, but yet I was so busy with custom orders all the time. I guess it was like the newness of that availability. But um, I uh, came to a point where recently I posted like, hey, I'm going to, sorry, I'm picking some more music. I was like, hey, I'm going to um, open myself back up for custom orders because I haven't said that in a long time like hey get your custom stuff for me um sorry I'm so bad at typing and thinking at the same time yes there we go okay so I hadn't been like hey I'm doing custom orders and like forever and um, so I was thinking people would be like, oh, yay, let me order something from her while she's doing them. And, like, I guess I just had, like, I was overconfident and had a lot of expectations. But literally for a long time, not one person after I posted that I was taking them, like, said anything. So I was like, okay, like, I guess nobody wants any artwork right now, whatever. And at first it didn't bother me because I was like, whatever. As they see me filling orders, it'll happen and people will want more. But, you know, of course, in that season, I was already in a spot where I was discouraged. I let it get under my skin. And at first it didn't, but then eventually it did. And then every time any negative thing would happen, I would, like, think about it even more and get even more discouraged. And I just started feeling like maybe that, I'm, like, thinking in my mind, I'm like, hey, maybe that ship has sailed and there's that door has closed and I'm not in a place in my life anymore where I can make money on my artwork like maybe what I do just isn't like 
what people want and that's fine, whatever, but I was feeling like pretty hurt about it. And um, I don't know, I was just like really bummed, really bumming, really hard. And the more I thought about it, the more bummed I became. And the more I wrestled with it, the less of a solution I had. And, um, and then I just kind of was like thinking to myself, I was like, okay, say that nobody wants your art, literally no one, no one on earth wants your artwork. Are you done? You know, like I asked myself that question, like, are you done doing this? And, um, I just like, I was like, yeah, but I want to do art. Like that was the thing that came to me in that minute was like that I realized, you know, I want to do art. Like I want to do art. It doesn't matter if, if somebody else wants me to or doesn't want me to, like, this is what I love to do. I'm going to do it. Like, if I could have a career of it, I would do it. So why wouldn't I do it even if I gained nothing from it? So, yeah, like Ray saying, like, I started out strong. I didn't start off in this place where it was like, oh, well, this is just for fun. Like, the second I put myself out there with artwork, it was like, boom, like, a huge, um, a huge clientele already, like a bunch of people doing, co wanting commission work. So like, to me, that became my expectation for myself was for every time I put myself out there, there's going to be a line of people waiting. And then when that reality hit me that, okay, no, nobody's standing in line for your artwork. It was just like really humbling. And at first I was so like prideful that I let that like really get under my skin and really affect my mindset when it came to making art but in the re like literally this was like four weeks ago guys I'm not saying this was like a year ago and I've gotten over it and moved on like this was like not very long ago I just like battled it out within myself where I was kind of in a place where I was really discouraged and really sad and then I just decided well like bottom line I'm still gonna do this even if nobody wants it. I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to enjoy doing it. And I'm still going to keep learning stuff because that's what I want to do. Like, I didn't, in the beginning, I didn't start doing art because I wanted money. I started sharing what I loved and it just happened to get me in a place where I could make some money that I wasn't expecting, you know what I mean? So I don't want to go back, I don't want to, I want to be in that place still where I'm doing something and I'm not expecting for it to give me something in return. So like, cause that's what love is. Like when you love someone, it's, you don't love them because you expect them to give you love in return. You love them and you hope that maybe they'll, maybe they'll return the affection. But even if they didn't, it'd still be like this unrequited love that you you had for them and it wouldn't really dwindle like that's real love you know so if I really love art then it'll be the same way maybe maybe the whole money um, thing will be unrequited for a while but the fact is when I make art it does give me something it gives me joy and it gives me it's almost like therapy for me so I am gaining a lot I'm gaining kind of like peace and I know it sounds mushy but there's a lot more to gain from it than just money and I can gain money in other ways and let those other ways be boring and mundane and then come home and kick back and do what I love and not make that into something I can't enjoy and that's kind of what um, Rachel and Brandon were talking about in the last the last podcast so I was like loved it just loved the entire podcast and listened to the whole thing probably two times in a row but um, that's where I'm at right now is in a place where I'm like, you know what, let this be something that brings you joy. So I'm determined to like keep myself in the mindset where I'm like, this is for joy, this is for joy, this is for joy. This isn't because you have something to prove or something to gain or, you know, like some kind of end goal for money. Like just enjoy it and don't be so worldly about it so I don't want to be the kind of person who only thinks about things in terms of like dollar bills and stuff I'm just I mean that isn't who I am and that I know for sure that even if things went as good as they possibly could with money it wouldn't I still wouldn't be satisfied you know what I mean 
what satisfies is not what you gain from it. Like I'm saying, it's like, it's satisfying to be satisfied in something without any requirements. But when there's all those requirements, is it really satisfying to begin with? Or is it like, there's a, it's a conditional kind of love. I kind of want to have an unconditional love between me and my art. So that's where the whole courage thing came into play because I had kind of like, anytime I struggle with something, I have this inner battle and I immediately need to do something. Like I don't just like sit on things and think on them and then come back to them later. I'm like the kind of person who like needs to take immediate action one way or the other. So um, hence why I got married when I was 17. I was like, oh, if we love each other, we're getting married. There's no like long drawn out relationship through college. Like let's do this. And he's the same way. So that's why we're going to be selling, celebrating our five year anniversary before he turns 24. But um, so I was having this like inner kind of, uh, not fight, but like, I always give myself an ultimatum. That's just kind of how I like live my life. And my ultimatum with this whole conflict was either quit it and stop whining and just stop doing this if you're torturing yourself over it, or do it and do it as hard as you can. Like, give your entire self over to what you love if you really love it don't like be like oh yeah I'm an artist and then do something once a month and try to sell it and then if it doesn't sell get discouraged and don't paint again forever like that's stupid so I was like if you're going to if you really want to be an artist and you really feel like in your soul like that's who you are then be it no matter what comes of it and that's when I decided to make my art account when um I, I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to put myself out there as an artist. I'm not going to, like, sneak little paintings in here and there on my personal feed in between pictures of Birdie and pictures of delicious-looking hot dogs. I'm going to make a place for my art to exist and for people to see it and enjoy it. And if they end up wanting to have some of their own and have it, like, have an actual hard copy of something that's awesome but like I want there to be a place where I just like I put all of the things I make in this place and then I can go back and look at it and enjoy like the growth I see and um, just the what I'm producing I can actually see it and say look that's that's the proof that you are an artist stop second-guessing yourself look at all this art you've made oh my gosh <laughs> Maybe later they'll get to rewatch it and they'll feel they'll feel what I'm saying. Also, do y'all feel like this little girl would have painted her fingernails cobalt blue? Because I do. I think I'm gonna paint her fingernails right now. It's all in the details, right? Let's see if I can do it without making it take over her entire hand. My daughter, Birdie, loves to get her fingernails painted. And she likes to do that thing where you pick one color for each finger. And because I'm all about being extra, I do it gladly. I'm like, sure, pick some more. We'll do stripes and everything. Thank you so much. I love the intensity of her fingernails now. Okay, so now I'm going to scoot her up and work on her little leggings here. What color should I do the leggings? Like, should I um, kind of do like a color blocking kind of visual thing where I do her leggings like coppery orangey also? I'm kind of like, I don't normally do like a matchy matchy thing, but I kind of like it for her because she's so like, she's so young and carefree. Thank you so much for watching. Maybe you can watch the rest later. But have a good night. And thank you. Light blue. Yeah, that'd be cute. Let's do that.
Oh my gosh, I know, isn't it sweet? Because they're kind of, they're really close to the same age. And it's so sweet when, like, you can find something that a little baby girl loves enough to sit there, like, as still as she possibly can. And you can tell it takes, like, effort, but they do it because they love it. I'm doing, like, a robin's egg blue so it's not too, like, intense. Hey Brandon, I was hoping you get to come. I was so bummed out yesterday when your video wouldn't work. I was trying to comment and then it would like kick me off the comment and I finally was able to comment I can't comment, but that was it. But it turned out really good. Only Brandon can manage to make literally spilling coffee look like gorgeous art. If I did that, like the whole page would be soaked through and wouldn't even be able to put a pin to it without ripping a hole in it. I hate when that happens. Oh, hey, Ian. I'm so glad y'all are here. I was hoping some of my pals would be able to make it. Me and Ray were lonely. And I can't tell who else is on here. It says a few people are on, but I don't know who. Um, let's see. What color polka dots? Dark blue? Like her fingernails? Mom is on. Gotta love that. She's our, our loyal viewer. I love it. What are y'all doing tonight? I'm just going to do a darker shade of blue. BTW. We're doing a little dreamer girl for the dreamer prompt that I missed a hundred years ago. Hey, but I'm catching up. I went from like 12 prompts behind to like 4 or 5. I have a sloth I'm going to show y'all that I did for the centered prompt. It's amazing. I mean, it's not like quality amazing, it's just like, I personally feel like the concept behind it's amazing. Um, you know what, I don't think I do have a white gel pen. I need to get one. I have a metallic pen. I'm going to put gold, oh yeah, I didn't tell y'all, surprise. I'm going to put gold strands in her hair with a metallic gold pen. Because I just feel like the sun's shining on her hair and she needs it. And then as soon as I'm done with this, y'all pick and tell me what y'all want me to do. Y'all, I sound so hick right now. I always sound really hick when I'm trying to sound really normal. But, you know. Um, I was going to say, tell me what you want me to do. I have my wood burner here on hand and a little wooden plaque. I have a hoop ready to go if I want to start an embroidery. And I can show y'all how I freehand um, what I'm going to embroider or stitch whatever and I also have like some brown cardstock paper that I can do some pastels on thank you what color should we do the shoes my my pals I have quite the accent somebody I can't remember who it was somebody commented that my voice is soothing and I literally just busted out laughing because that is the last thing I ever expected to hear I feel like I have the voice of a redneck beaver or something. Green shoes. Get all them colors up in there. I am going to do some green in the background, though. Should I do green shoes and some green grass, or should I do a different color? Purple shoes, maybe, in a green background. Because I'm going to do grass, like, popping up around here and here and blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to do pin for her face because I want to do black for her lashes and her, I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to do like dark peach for her nose because I don't want every feature on her face to be lined in black.
purple. Thank you. Light purple. That's kind of my favorite color right now. I've I've had a hard time my entire life identifying what my favorite color is. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, but then this year, I've like really been loving um, purple, lavender, lilac, orchid, all those like really pretty soft colors. If you hear some banging around out my door, it's definitely Birdie trying to break in. She's not out there alone, don't worry. Cody is home, but she's determined nonetheless. It took me about an hour earlier just to record those few simple videos for the stories because Birdie kept fake sneezing every time I would start recording like she knew. Fake sneezing. I didn't even know she knew how to fake sneeze. Apparently she does. Okay, light purple shoes. I gotta make the light purple because that's the one color that didn't come in the palette because I guess they just expect you to use up half your white mixing it with every other color. Yeah, I've noticed when I line people's noses, I really hate it certain times. Certain times it's okay and I think it does do some good, but so, most of the times I'm just like, why did I do that? Like, it just went from soft to like so nasty. Um, this is like an example. Hers, fine. I think that's fine. That's Jane Eyre and Mr. Rochester, by the way. And then this is Mary Crawley and Matthew Crawley and I hate Mary's nose what I did to her nose in this like what is that nostril disgusto also he looks like he's 87 but we won't go there and then this I don't know if I can make it this one this one is um right here that is um Erwin and Aragorn And I haven't finished that one because I started with black like I don't know anything and now I don't know what to do with it. Oh my gosh, I know. It was funny because I thought she wasn't going to say anything because usually when I tell her to say something, like if I'm like, say hi or something, she'll just sit there and stare like she doesn't know how to speak English just to make me look a fool. But she gladly said hi in the stories today. And that was like one take. Her video took one take. Mine took 190 because she wanted me to do a take of her. But she's awesome. And I'll do dark purple soles. And after this... See, I'm going to hold off on the green background and do that a little bit later so I can make sure all of these little bits have dried. Um, and I'm going to move on to something else. Should I do wood burning, embroidery, more watercolors, or pastels? Or pen and ink. I also can do some pen and ink. So, so far... So far, this is what we're working with. It's really hard because of the way I've angled my phone. And I'm going to soften that nose up in a minute, but just wanted to get it in there. Pastels or wood burning? Yeah, I haven't done that in a while, so I was thinking I shall. But I'm liking how this is going to look. And then I'm going to do little sprigs of grass and a few little bitty flowers. Nothing too um, crazy so it doesn't steal your attention from her. Not that you could. I mean, look at this hair, but... Um, let's see, I haven't done wood burning in a long time, but I also haven't done pastels but once in the past, like, six years. Um, if I do wood burning, here is the plaque. It's a little dinged up, 
from being in storage forever. Um, if I do embroidery, here is the hoop, and I would freehand sketch and then stitch it. And I could just do like a little bit of that just so you get the gist because that takes a long time. Or I have these little cards. Let's see. These little brown cards and this box of pastels. The only thing about the pastels is um, they're so like primary. And I'm so usually not the kind of person to use, like, literally primary and secondary colors only. I use, like, weird colors that you didn't know existed until you mixed them all together. Um, so it's kind of, like, hard to get the typical color scheme I do out of this. But it, it is kind of nice because it's challenged me to do something different for once instead of, like, muted pastels and earth tones and jewel tones and so... Yeah, there is that. Um, yeah, tune into the replay, Brandon. Um, enjoy your dinner. Hey, Jackie's here. Let me see if I can wave without destroying this whole video. Thank you so much about the needlepoint. Um, did I show it to y'all on here? I was going to show y'all what I've been doing lately. Um... That one I kind of like, I just felt like inspired in the moment, so I just went with it and sketched out something a little more ambitious than I've been doing, and I'm glad I did because it made me work harder than I normally do. But I just sketched out the words, um, found like a cute quote on Pinterest, and then just copied the format of the, like the font and the, the whole layout of the words, and then I just kind of freehanded some flowers around it and did the embroidery just kind of however it seemed like it needed to be and I definitely feel like it's a little like clunky like cl not as like soft as I wanted like the flowers and the leaves and everything to look but it's it's a lot better than what I started with and like I actually enjoyed it all the way through because sometimes I get to a weird point in um, doing like stitching something where I feel like I just want to quit but I actually really was excited to finish this one and finished it rather quickly. Bye, Brandon. Let me see. Oh, don't worry about being late. I, I'll show you because um, you're here. We just did a little watercolor. And everybody kind of has been jumping on in the last 15, 20 minutes. But um, we just did this little watercolor. And um, this is for the dreamer prompt. Um, I'm going to do some grass, and I'm going to do some pen and, and ink over it in a little bit, and I'm um, going to add some gold strands in her hair. And then, yeah, that Tuesday tapes drawing was freaking gorgeous. I really, like, it kind of was, like, trippy when I first saw it. I thought it was an actual picture of, what are they called, Madeline's? Mad Madeline's? I'm not even sure. I'm not fancy enough to eat that kind of stuff. Although I would love to. Um, so there's that one. But they're, they are not all winners. Um, here's a few that I feel like were winners. The bouquet. That was fun. Madeline's. You're welcome. And then this one um, is the make-believe one. And you'll notice, like, I don't know why, but I started and I have not stopped doing them all on felt. I'm sure it adds a lot of complications. It's so thick and hard to get the needle and thread through, but I just like how it looks. So probably takes me ten times longer than if I use the kind of fabric you're supposed to, but I just for some reason started that way, and I haven't stopped. And, um... Like I was saying, they're not all winners. I started doing this one for the Courage prompt, and I literally hate it. I hate the colors of blue together, but I was out of thread at the time, and I had like a limited stuff, limited choices. So I was like, oh, I'm sure I can make this work. But now I know I have to trust my gut because even when I picked the colors, I was like, nope, don't like them. And now I'm still like, eh, I don't even know if I'm going to finish it. But I probably will just because I don't like... I'm getting kind of less um, 
less okay with leaving things unfinished. But, um, yeah, I think I want to make more of the make-believe one, because that one's, like, my favorite as far as the actual quote and the layout of it. And then the have courage and be kind, I just wanted to go a little bit bigger and more detailed with the words, but I still like the really basic stitch on that banner. Um, so those are my my stitches. And then this is the sloth that I made for the um, centered prompt. Little yoga sloth. And I don't know why this is one. Um... Kind of. I can't take full credit, Jackie. I, I, um, I feel like I'm like a hobby napper. Like I'm always stealing other people's hobbies. Oh, let me turn it off. It's not even hot in here anymore. I'm always stealing other people's hobbies, I feel like. I always feel like guilty. And that's where my imposter syndrome, syndrome comes from. Is from like, I'm like, you literally always steal people's hobbies and pastimes and like, and, I, and then I'm not even as good as them, but I just want to do it. But then I'm like, stop being hard on yourself. It's fun to try new things. It's a good thing. And then every person I've ever asked for advice, they've helped me and been happy to. Like, wood burning, I totally learned from Reagan at Home Buddies. Um, yeah, that's what I've been telling myself now. I'm like, people are happy to share their hobbies. At least I am. Like, when people ask me for help, I love to help them. And, like, you never know. Like... Some people just focus on one thing and then they, like, slay it. I do everything rather poorly and love it, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I think that it's made me grow a lot. And, and it also has, like, made me make a lot more friends than if I was just like, I'm only going to do what I do and I'm only going to follow people that do what I do. But it's kind of, I'm just, I don't know, I'm not good at committing to one thing um, in any area of life other than my spouse. I am committed to my spouse. <laughs> um, but, um, make decorative pillows out of those quotes. That would be cute. I wonder if, like, too many squares of felt would make, like, a cute little pillow. Using red ink, but she's not the only one who does it. It's like saying, I can't use rulers because so-and-so does. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, you feel like you're stepping into territory that's not yours at first and until you just do it you feel a little bit apprehensive and like is this okay should I take a step back and stay in my lane but nobody's ever discouraged me from trying anything new it's just all from me being dumb oh my gosh so about embroidering clothes I have something I'm gonna try to embroider I have this denim jacket or this denim vest and it's just a basic kind of medium wash denim vest and it still fits me and I literally never wear it just because like I I think I like mostly want to wear it in the fall because who wants to put more denim on their body in Texas in the summer like it's the worst thing I could ever think of but I did like when I saw um I saw somebody post the other day like that they were doing custom jackets, and I was like, oh, that's so cute, and then, like, it didn't occur to me until I was cleaning out my closet two days ago that I was like, oh, I could do that to mine, and then I'd want to wear it in the fall and in the winter over cute long sleeve shirts and stuff, but, um, gosh, like, a hundred years ago, Jackie asked me if I had taught myself to embroider. I watched some videos on DMC Embroidery's, um, Instagram account, and then, um, I think I've watched some of the stewards that do embroidery, and then I, I think I didn't, I don't think I reached out to anybody to ask for help for this one, because, like, when you see it, you kind of just copy it, like, the, the whole, like, the, I don't know, the way it works, like, if you watch it, you can kind of figure it out, like, it's, an, it's more like you just put the thread in the right spots once you see like how each stitch works so I learned stitches off of DMC embroidery and then I um hey Kimberly's here welcome so I learned the stitches and then I just went for it 
and I do know how to sew so I think that's why it was kind of easy to like watch and do because I already know how to sew with a sewing machine and I've already had to hand sew some things so I had a little bit of prior knowledge about needles and thread but mainly it was watching um, some different people who do embroidery on their stories or live or DMC's Instagram that I figured out how to do it. So that is kind of how that came about. And I'm still figuring out. I like only have a few stitches in my inventory or arsenal, so I'm still learning more. But I mean, once you learn like four or five, you can pretty much make anything. So, man, um, let's see. Let's do pastels because that wood burner is going to get hot. And like I said, I'm very not confident with pastels yet because I'm just starting to do them again. But I'm kind of forcing myself to just do it. Even, I mean, not everything has to turn out awesome. So I'm going to use this tiny little card. And I was thinking um, maybe it would be cute to do like a picture on one side. And then like a little note on the other and give it to people. Like give one to my mom or my sisters or like my friend Abby who watches my daughter. She's like the best babysitter ever. So I just thought it'd be nice to like give people little things. And then it's like, it's so small and if they want to throw it away they can. But I don't know. I just think I need to be more like generous. Um, what should I do? Can screen record you can screen record my video that's cool I do like I have tons of storage space on my phone so I'll probably just save it just in case if I can figure it out maybe I can't maybe I can but um, that's awesome to know we have backup this time um, I think let's see should I do some leaves a bear oh my gosh that's how do you do a bear with pastels I can draw a bear I can paint a bear I don't know how to do anything with pastels but just got yeah awesome a lighthouse maybe that yeah maybe a lighthouse let me look at I always pull up an actual photo on my computer that's how I do my freehand sketching I I don't just like not have a reference I don't trace it but I just have a reference to look at and that's I don't make patterns for my embroidery either I just look at a reference and then freehand it but I'm not very good at using stencils uh, let's see lighthouse I do have a lot of blues, and I have browns, and reds, and yellows. I mean, this is probably going to turn out not so great, because I haven't really messed with these yet, but who cares? Let's have fun with it. I'm going to do one of the red and white striped ones. Um... How long is this video, by the way? Do y'all know how long it's been? It doesn't tell me time. Draw a bird. A wishing well. A wishing well would be cute. Maybe I'll do that. And then I could use like a cute wish pun to make like a little card. Because puns are great. I'm terrible at them. I always have to Google them, but still great. Who's awesome at puns? Somebody in the studio was like amazing at puns. It's about to end. Oh no. Should I do two or should I just end it? Oh my god, it's literally about to end. Send some wishes. That's sweet. Oh, it could just be like best wishes. Oh yeah, I have 19 seconds remaining. So I guess I'm going to go. Should I start another one? Okay, I'll start another one. So I'll end this one, and then we'll start. Bye. I'm back. Can't 
get rid of me tonight. Ray's back. Probably yelling into the mic right now. Get my pencils. Hello. Okay. Wishing well it is. And I picked a bigger card because that one was like literally too little to even write anything on the back of pretty much. So... I'm picking my wishing well reference on on the line. Scrolling through wishing well picks. Okay, found one. It's cobblestone. Should I do wood or cobblestone? Both. Okay. Awesome. I love when people draw together via the interwebs. Thanks for coming back, guys. I thought for a minute there y'all were just gonna abandon me. JK. Didn't think that. So I'm just gonna sketch out the the uh, outline, I guess. If I can figure out how to make basic shapes here. You should totally do it. You should do it because I don't do the whole greeting card things. I'm ter like I said, I'm awful at puns. It stresses me out. Puns, clever sayings, words in general. So um, it literally stresses me out to think of like having to constantly make cards. I don't know how you do it. You're so good at it though. My cards would just be like, "Sorry, you're still sick." Get, get unsick. Flower card. Yeah, man, there's some real pros up in this business. Not me. It's okay. I have 150 other hobbies. Too many. Cody's always like. Oh yeah, you're gonna learn another thing? That's great. You're gonna run out of room to store all of your hobby stuff soon though. He thinks it's funny. I just think it's like life is short. Learn learn everything you can. If you want to. If you don't want to, it's fine. But if you want to, go for it. There's too many things out there that'll be too fun to do. Not to try them at least once. I'm just gonna do it really rough because all of that, like, I've been pinning um, pastel stuff for inspirations because I'm like literally visually I was just blank. Like, I bought the pastels and then I was like, yeah, pastels. And then um, I just couldn't even think of like what I would want something to look like with them. I forgot visually what anything done in pastels would look like and um, that's kind of off okay. and uh, now I just saved a bunch of stuff that I felt like was kind of inspiring and um, kind of have an idea of that like roughness and like when things are just kind of like quickly sketched in and um, not too structurally high maintenance, I guess I would say. Don't know. Okay, that's kind of kind of a thing, I guess. With this thicker. This thicker and then Two old school wood shingles. I 
A lot of people I've noticed have been talking about how sometimes they don't um, sketch things at all before. Um, I'd be interested to try that because I don't know if I've ever painted something that I didn't completely sketch in and think out prior to it. I just don't feel like it would look... Get unsick. Yes, that's amazing. Very instrumental in my life. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, I love puns. That's the thing. I love them. I appreciate a good pun. I'm just not the one who comes up with them. I think that's what's... I think it's fun, though, when you just kind of are, like, surprised by other people's humor. I love that when somebody has, like, a different kind of humor that you also enjoy... And then it's kind of like they keep surprising you with the things they say and do and their jokes and stuff instead of it being like, yeah, that's like something I'd say. Do any of y'all watch um, like stand-up comedy ever? My husband really loves to and like I didn't at first, but now I really have been enjoying it. It's really funny to like when you're kind of like stressed or tired after a long day of work and then you just sit down and watch somebody crack jokes left and right. I love that about you, Ray, like that you have like a morbid humor. It's like the last thing, like the last thing ever you would expect, but then like it's like the best. I guess I'm going to go in with some brown first. I mean, look at this. It's like coloring with a small stick of wood, but it's chalky. It's just the most perplexing thing to me. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna do it, and you're gonna like it. Every Friday night, yes. Um, British humor. I love it too. I love British humor and just British accents, British everything. British culture, British clothing, British hair. It's a thing. Oh, look at that. I already messed up. Oh, well. Um, we took our... Have any of y'all ever done the ancestry thing? Um, Have any of y'all ever done the thing where you, like, find out what you're, like, you do the DNA test and then you find out, like, um, what your, all the different ethnicities you have? What are all yours, Ray? Ours would be similar, I guess, because we're, like, related, related and all that, but, um, my entire life, French, that's awesome, um, I think... I think 23andMe is what my sister did, um, and, um, all her entire life, my mom thought we were literally an eighth Cherokee, like straight up an eighth Cherokee, and yet I was as pale as Edward Cullen, so it was really weird to me, I was like, okay, I guess, like, it's, the Indian force is not strong with me, but, um, whatever, I just believed it. And she believed it, too, because that's what she was told. We take our ancestry test, and we're 2%, 2% Native American. And literally, just pretty much straight up British. Like, oh, that's a cool combination. Japanese, English, and Scottish. We're 67% Great Britain. And um, I'm like, man, shouldn't I be classier if I'm 67% British? Like, should I not talk like Sandy from Spongebob if that's how British I am? But I guess life's not fair. And, uh, I'm just a redneck. But, um, we're like a little bit, a little bit Jewish. I didn't know that. We're a little bit Jewish, which was really cool to me. So I really love, um, Jewish history and just learning anything about that and then uh yeah my my mom my mom thought on the weatherford side that we were um pretty 
had a little bit of Indian, Native American in us. And then um, my, oh my gosh, um, yes, you've got to do the DNA test. I, like, they are not overrated. They're awesome. Very enlightening. Um, but I found out we're a little bit, a little bit Native American, 2%. And then, um, like, what's the other things we were? Something really crazy sounding. A little bit um, Scottish, Irish, Wales, and then um, just a whole lot of British, which was really cool because, like I said, I'm really into the British culture, so maybe that's why. My sister and I, I was Mary Crawley for Halloween. My sister was literally Queen Elizabeth like young Queen Elizabeth, like from like the crown type time period. Yeah, I don't know what my humor is, but it's something. Yeah, my my last name, my mom's maiden name is Weatherford. And I think that her side of the family had to do with the founding of Weatherford, Texas. And then my dad's side of the family is Pointer. And there's a town in Texas that our family had something to do with some cool dude did something about a train and then there it was pointer texas so basically basically we're really cool interesting people boy did we let our ancestors down and i turned out to be a cheeto obsessed artist they were all founding towns one of our, oh, the best story, though, we do have some Indian in us, like I was saying. And one, long story short, always a long story, never a short story. One of the ancestors was, her name was Gussie. Yeah, I don't know what the whole train thing was, but, like, Grandpa Sam would have been able to tell you the whole thing. He knew every bit of our ancestry. Um, apparently he, he did tell us, like, we're super British guys, we're so British, and we were like, no, we're this and that. He was like, no, I should know. But he, he did, he knew. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying now. Oh, Gussie, she was a crazy lady that people were literally afraid of. Um, she was, um no better way to put it, abducted by an Indian chief, and he made her his wife, and they had, like, a little cute half-Indian son who ended up being, like, a big-time chief, and that's where Nakona, Texas came from. I mean, that's, like, way up, though. It's not like all of my immediate grandparents are just awesome legends, but, you know, everybody's ancestry goes back to someone cool, I guess. Yeah, our grandparents... Um, or siblings. My grandpa Sam is her grandma's brother. Modena. Um, both, uh, or like her grandpa and your grandmother. Yeah. Anybody have any interesting stories they know about their family? I know everyone comes from something that's what I really love like that's why I love that the ancestry thing is a thing now because I I want to get my husband um I want to get him one of the tests for like something special soon because um I wanted to get it for father's day but he wanted a fishing bow like a he literally wanted to go bow fishing I thought that was just something that like Napoleon Dynamite did but I guess it's a real thing so I got him a bow a fishing bow for Father's Day, but I want to get him a DNA test because he came from a family where they literally, like, he just was not told about any of his family history, and he has, like, a really rough family background, so all he knows is negative. Oh, cool. Ferris wheel inventor. Great, great, great uncle. Oh my gosh, guys, speaking of Ferris wheels, one of my friends is in Brazil right now. She's She's from Australia. Somehow she ends up in Mineral Wells, Texas as a missionary. And this is like her base that she works out of. And um, she sent me, sent, or posted a video on um, Facebook of the Ferris wheel in Brazil. No, Belize, not Brazil. I don't know why I'm saying Belize. And um, 
it literally was going like 100 miles an hour backwards. And people were like loving it. I loved it. I would die. I get so dizzy and sick. Let's see. Y'all want to listen to some Ava Brothers? Just turning some music on. So there's a billion different background noises for y'all to hear. I know that's what you came here for. who mooned his French captors while escaping on a lifeboat during the war. Now that's something to be proud of. That's something I'm going to need. I just feel like you should have like a big mural on your wall to commemorate that. It's amazing. Okay, here we go. Let's do this again. Do some wood grain. And life goals. It's amazing. I only hope my kids will have stories that grand about me someday, but I'm going to have to get a little bit more adventurous if there's going to be anything. Because so far, the best story that's ever been about me was all from when I was like seven or younger when I literally did not have any fear in my brain or body and I would just do crazy stuff that people still bring up every time they see me and I really think my daughter's going to be that way because she will do like anything and you're just like how does a human think to do that she's like well I just do so I'm just that great like what kind of stuff? Let me think of some shenanigans she's been up to lately. Um, well, she just, first of all, she's got a great ability and name. She's good at naming things. So she has the dog she sleeps with every night is Toby. And her new fish, Gordon. So she's on a roll so far. Might let her name the next kid we have. Oh. <laughs> No. I wasn't even putting that much pressure. Oh my gosh. Brandon's grandfather. What? What are we talking about? Brandon's grandfather? Yeah, that's a question I want to know. Did you know Brandon before the arts do? <sighs> Cody's always like watching over my shoulder all the like live videos and stories from the stew and from all of y'all. So hope y'all are down for that. Um, and he he thought Brandon was like a teenager. And then one in one video, Brandon was like my teenage kids, and he's like what? Like, it blew his mind that Brandon had older kids. Because he was like, I thought he was like a college kid. I'm like, no, he's just cool. He just stays cool longer than most adult males. Plus, he's got the cool haircut. All that stuff. Can't wait for him to rewatch this. met him, followed him, found out he was in my, that is really cool. How, hey, this is a good question, and I want everybody to answer, because it's, it's a good one. Um, how did all of you find out about the stew, become a steward, and what made you become a steward? Like, what was the thing where you were like, yeah, I'm going to do this? I know, you and Brandon just, like, seem like kindred spirits. Like, just good old pals from the beginning of time. Kind of like me and thin Oreos. Is Brittany here? It's 
time for that Michael Scott Britney meme. I'm not gonna cuss on the arts too, but you all know what I'm talking about. Kimberly told you about this too? Oh my gosh, y'all don't even want to know how many packs of thin Oreos I consumed when I was pregnant with Birdie. I have a theory that it's what resulted in her being terribly adorable. It was just large amounts of Oreos. When you eat that many Oreos, you're bound to have a cute kid, right? Yeah, uh, Brittany found out. Yep, there she goes. She's not afraid. She found out about it when I forced her to join against her will by threat of death. Now she loves it. How you found it, but it was instantly drawn in by Ray. Of course. She DM'd me after I started following her. Hatching artist Instagram feed. Yeah, I loved that Instagram feed. I was just bragging about her. What is a thin Oreo? How have you gotten through life in this day and age without thin Oreos? I hate how much of the like s icing they put in Oreos. They make Oreos that have like half of the stuffing, so you're really getting a good cookie to milk to icing ratio. It's not too much to overwhelm your brain. Oh man, yeah. Well, if you like the icing, you'd hate then, but I use Oreos purely for dunking purposes, so it's good. I think it's good to have less icing. Chocolate inside vanilla out. Mmm. I'm not a fan of that. I'm all about that chocolate cookie. Birdie loves cookies, too. My mom is a baker, for those of you who don't know, so we consume large amounts large amounts of cookies she had one today it was shaped like a snow cone with purple icing and um, she took it down pretty quickly her mouth is the size of a baby mouse so but she can eat pretty good just like her mom is this totally messing it up as I'm doing this I'm like oh my gosh looks like I just did a piece of art and then a dog walked on it. Oh my god. That is not good. Oh gosh, no. The only cookies that I like were the chocolates on the inside. Uh, that, I believe, um, gosh, what is that called? I don't know what they're called. Um, my favorite though is the Pepperidge Farms Fudge Elf. Is that literally what it's called? Fudge Elf. Just doesn't, doesn't roll off the tongue like you'd think. Um, I like those Pepperidge Farms, like whatever they're called, Milano's or something. I don't know. I just see it and I know. Yes. Yes. The Milano cookies. Um, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of brown outlining and then kind of a little bit of black too. I just didn't want to go all black so it wouldn't look insane. Because black is insane sometimes. Especially when you're supposed to be doing something soft. Um, What else were we going to talk about tonight? I forgot. I had like all these like talking points and I probably haven't touched one of them yet and I've been going for about ten and a half hours so. It's also one of my other special skills is never staying on topic. Mr. Deeds. Keebler Elf. Yes. I'm going all the way back. Chocolate orange. I would love to try that. I do like orange and chocolate together. I like those literal chocolate oranges you can get around Christmas time. 
I'm like diseased lately. I feel like literally I'm dying for fall. Like all I can think about is it not being summer. It's been, I think seriously some of the negativity I was facing earlier with all the discouragement was rooted in the fact that I'm dying of a heat stroke constantly every day because Texas is just awful. Like, I love Texas every moment until summer, and then I'm like, somebody get me the H out of here. But, um, I'm just, like, always dying. Well. Oh, I thought you said, well, this looks incredible. I was like, pun it up. That would have been awesome, but it's still, thank you. Still not going to complain. It was a nice comment. We do need an art store retreat. I will pay top dollar, even though... As long as top dollar is like under under a certain amount of money because I don't have that many dollars. Um Yeah, I'm super stoked about the Harry Potter. Um I don't like summer at all right now. I'm just I like by evening time when I could be enjoying the evening, I'm still just bitter about what happened that day when I nearly dropped dead of heat stroke again, so I'm still mad by evening. I would love to come to California. I've never been to California. My mom was born in California. Another fun fact. Um, but, yeah, I've never been there. And I um, always wanted to go because it seems like it'd be like much more mild and enjoyable. Like, sunny, some, some rain. But honestly, I'm one of those freaks of nature that just wants it to be raining 24 hours a day. So we were thinking about going to um, Seattle, but I think we're going to hold off until we can road trip that one because I want to go up the entire coast on our way there so I don't miss anything. Bye, Brittany. Uh, literally don't know where she was born. I don't know if she knows where she was born because she was only there for like a few months. Um, I'll have to ask her. That's a pretty big thing to know about your parents. Sorry for not knowing that, Mom. She'll never watch this, though, because she, she, doesn't, she doesn't use the internet outside of Facebook and Amazon Prime. And Pinterest. She loves her Pinterest. Who doesn't? Um... Let me do some darker back here. Outline that. This is difficult. I'm not going to lie and pretend I'm just like breezing through this. I'm having kind of a hard time. It's just messy. And my fan's blowing me in the face. And I don't know what I'm doing, but oh well. Um, here's to try new things, right? Do the awful rope. Oh, it's, it's fun, though. Kind of feel like a kid. Um, perhaps some yellow. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing. I'm always doing stuff that I'm like, oh, I could sell that, because... When you grow up slightly not grayed off with money, you're always in a mentality of how to like put yourself in a better position financially. And I'm learning now that like if I'm going to really enjoy art, I'm going to have to do things that they're not going to make me any money. This little guy, no money. Never will any money come of this. I'm just going to name it and claim it. This will never make me money, and I'm going to be okay with that. Um, don't know how, but I'd be, I'd like to learn. Um, I'd like to learn how to mix those two together. I was asking you the other day if it's physically possible to mix oils with, um, with the chalk pastels. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. So kind. Um, how about some red brown to add some more color to this? Maybe do the thing where you just kind of slide it. 
Just kind of. Does anyone else, is anyone else obsessed with fall? Because we already talked about it, and I'm still thinking about it. Is any, do you like fall better, winter better, spring? I just feel like I can't stop imagining what it's going to be like when it finally gets cool, and I start making Birdie's costume, and I'm wearing sweaters every day, and I'm drinking, like, really hot coffee with a billion different flavors of creamer. Autumn. Yeah. I have to refer to fall. This is the saddest thing ever. I have to refer to fall as autumn with Birdie most of the time because she's she has a fear of falling. So if I say anything about fall, she's like, I don't want to fall. And I'm like, I'm not talking about falling down. I would never say I love fall in reference to you falling down. But she's a toddler. She doesn't get it. So, so yeah. I have to say... Aren't you excited about Autumn? And then she'll freak out. Maybe I'll post a video of her freaking out about how excited she is about Autumn because it's really sweet. I'm like, love it. Do a little bit more intense line work. The lines kind of get lost in this stuff. I almost forgot about these beans. Some dark, some red or red. <sighs> keep blowing all the extra stuff off. If y'all wonder why I keep hearing that. Sweaters every day is just everything I've ever dreamed of. I have like 50 of them. And I, some of them, I want, I literally have one. It's my favorite sweater. It's called the tag. This, get ready for the best thing you've ever heard. The tag on this sweater literally is labeled Lord Jeff. Lord Jeff. That's the best name I've ever heard, first of all. It's the comfiest sweater ever and just the right amount of hideous, ugly yellow brown orange. Happy holidays! Yes! Rosie did that too. And she was like, happy don't fall. <laughs> I love kids. They're so funny. So funny. I think I'm gonna like break on this one and um, move on do y'all want to like for just a minute watch me wood burn something or y'all like dude you've been on for a million years get a life go eat some ramen noodles take a break remember kids are literally amazing I'm gonna try to make birdie not make her I'm gonna try to help her stay as strange and wonderful as possible for as long as possible. My parents let me be weird and I will never ever be able to thank them enough for letting me wear just the weirdest stuff ever to school and just do weird things and they just went with it. They let it happen. Um, it's just great. They let me have fun. I'm going to wood burn. Okay. Because this is, this is fun and cute, and I'll probably do details later, but um, uh, for now I'm just going to let her be. I'm going to sit her up there so I can look at her, and let's do some wood burning, because that sounds fun. Um, how many of y'all have a Patreon, just out of curiosity? I know we have our Art Stew Patreon. I didn't know if any of you individual artists had a Patreon. So I'm thinking about making one and starting it up by this fall. And I want to be sure that I know what I'm doing kind of before I start. Because I have a habit of being absolutely horrible with technology. So I need to learn a lot. That is a really neat concept. 
of going back in time and like meeting his kids. I don't know, I don't know how much y'all would like me then. So I literally thought I was George Strait for a while. Pretty bossy. Pretty much never brushed my hair. But, um, what a time. I'm going to scoot this rodeo over. Let's switch things around. Let's see. Shall I move this to the other side somehow without destroying everything? Let me do this. My laptop here. My little cord to the Laverna doesn't reach that far, so I'm going to scoot us over. Move this. Yeah, I was thinking that too, like, with Patreon. Um, starting off small and simple and just letting letting my, my, my friends and... Um, family that is always nice enough to support me gain something from supporting me like just simple little things and things that don't like literally cost me so that it doesn't become a burden and um, uh, just kind of start small and but I kind of want to have like a good system in place and a good um, routine. I'm going to probably do a live video that everybody can join me on for one tier and then um, for another one I was thinking about doing a podcast because I actually have an audio interface and a good mic with a pop screen and a mic holder and everything. So I was thinking why not do that and then maybe help um, answer questions or just tell fun stories or something while I do some work of my own. Bye Kimberly. Have a good dinner. Have a very good dinner. It's nothing I like more than dinner. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Ray, because I think as soon as you get as soon as you get obsessed with making money your energy goes down. As soon as you get obsessed with being the only artist out there and you get competitive, you you become miserable and you make other people miserable. And um, as soon as you put pressure on yourself to do everything right without any mistakes, you stop doing everything altogether. And sorry, my, my video paused. I was turning my computer back on. What do y'all want me to wood burn? I usually do animals for some reason. Always. On every medium. Um, what are y'all feeling inspired by as of late? I'm going to look at... I might even just do a little laurel for a fine. Yeah, that could be cute. Um, let me find my little. I have a folder with like baby deers and stuff in it. I haven't. I don't know if I've ever done a baby deer though on a wood burning. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Let me find the right inspiration pit. And I'll show you too. I'm going to pick up my phone and show you. And. Oh man, come on. I should have had it ready to go. But I did. I kind of wanted y'all to get to pick what y'all wanted to see. So I wasn't just going off on my own. Your fawn? I haven't seen your fawn. What? What fawn are you talking about? Did you post it today? Uh, 
Um, I don't know how I missed it. Don't let being human keep you from being a deer. That's the sweetest quote ever. Is that on your Instagram? If I have seen it, I do have, like, pretty much memory loss issues. So, I might have seen it and then forgotten. Because, um, terrible. An older piece. Okay. I need to go back and look at it. So, I'm thinking, um, about doing, like, a little deer, like, curled up, sitting down with some flowers beside it. And I probably won't be able to finish it in this video, but I at least can start and show you, like, what I do. And that's such a sweet quote, though. I love quotes like that. Just things that you feel like you remember seeing out of, like, an old storybook or something. Good little life lessons. Mmm. -hmm. I've had it like a billion things saved, and now that I'm looking through it, I can't find it. Usually with um, wood burning, I try to do things, here's a little tip since it is Tuesday tips. I try to do things that have simple lines, so sometimes um, I don't look at an actual photograph. I usually look at an actual photograph for anything else like watercolors and then I kind of interpret and do some kind of like more simple or um, kind of like a less complex image to do but with um, with wood burning it is so I'm sure that I can get it eventually to where there's more dimension but for the time being it's black or it's wood you know or brown you can do some shading but, um, so I try to do something that's kind of like very plain and simple as my reference and then go off of that and add more detail if I need to. But, um, I am going to pick something. Okay, I love this. Let me show you. See that? little kind of rough sketched that looks kind of cute that would be cute to try pastels with too later I will make both available for replay so I'm thinking I like the little laurel around it the leaves and I like the flowers on its head and I like that the shape is very simple and should be easy to replicate even with a wood burner so I'm gonna go for that one and the first thing I'm gonna do is sketch it out lightly very lightly and oh it's gonna be hard let's see try not to burn my flesh while I do this first let me get I always start with the head I don't know if everyone does that or if it's just me but I always start with the head hopefully I'll get this proportion because normally I get up in there and I use a ruler and stuff sometimes but for this one I'm gonna try to do it without it just to cut back on time and to kind of give myself a little challenge and its little ears are kind of cute and almost floppy and then it's got some flowers here I'm gonna add a leaf right here and a leaf right here maybe one right there and then it's got sweet little eyes Very little eyes. I'm gonna get make that one a little bigger. So cute though. So cute though. There's a pun. Been trying to make one happen all night. Finally did it. Um Yeah, I'm not gonna do it exactly like that one. I'm gonna do the exact uh position though, because here's a little secret. I'm not gonna sell this and 
I'm very bad at anatomy. Like, I'm very bad at making things anatomically correct. That's why I'm always using a photograph as a reference instead of another piece of artwork because I don't want to just copy things, like, completely copy something because I think that's kind of messed up. Um, with wood burning, I'm just getting started and I'm kind of struggling to make things look correct as far as proportions, placement, and all that. So, for practice sake, I'm going to keep the body the same, change up the markings, I'm going to make the tail like a flicked up instead of down, but for the most part, I'm going to keep it the same because honestly, I'm scared to change it because I don't want to lose the proportions that are actually right, because I, I'm i not good at freestyling um, bodies. Does anybody else struggle with that? I, like, I can do so many things freehand, so easy, and then when it comes to a body, I struggle so hard. And like I said, that's why I use photograph as reference and not um, art, because I don't want to just straight up copy art that someone else spent the time to get proportionate and correct but in this case I'm gonna let this person help me out in learning how to make things right and I don't think I'm gonna do the laurel like it is I'm gonna do a little bit of floral here a little bit of floral here and then leave the top blank And I'm not going to use that quote. Um, I don't think I've ever wood burned words that little either. That would be a challenge. But it'd be one fun to try. Okay, so for her tail, she's going to have hers up. Hopefully, it won't look like she's pooping. But, you know, babies poop. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, no, I get it. I don't, uh, I don't want to be a literal imposter, so I do not mind changing things up. And, um, I'm going to give her, um, uh, I'm going to do some spots, but I'm going to do them different. I'm going to do a little all over. I'm going to give her a white belly, and she's going to be a little white tail. She's going to have a white chest. I don't even know if there's a deer that has these markings, but I'm going to go for it. She's going to have a little white spot here. And this is going to be kind of brown, and her face is going to be lighter, and her ears are going to be white on the inside. And, um, let's see what else I can do. Let's say, for now I'm not going to do florals. Let's just do the deer, and then if I want to add more florals later, I can. Um, it says that the person who made this is Sarah Jane Studios. So, credit to her whoever she is, for being good at making things look cute. Um, that's why you never draw. Yeah, I know. Like, for a long time, it really did, I was hung up on it. Um, but you're so good at photography. I am terrible at photography. Um, like, art photography. I can manage to take a good picture of, like, some content, but, like, that creative, beautiful wilderness type photography not so good I don't think this is hot enough my feet are both asleep because I was a doofus and sat on both of my feet just now um, but at the beginning of the year I decided with the art stew prompts to try to push myself to do more actual bodies um, and to do more people because I never did people and then today, in my first live video, y'all saw me do a little person, a little girl. That I just completely made up. I did not look at a picture of anything. So that was really cool for me to do a person without 
looking at a picture and feeling like I needed to copy some aspects of it in order to get it just to not look like a toddler drew it. Um, yeah, I guess I should tell y'all what I'm doing. Um, so this is the wood burner that Reagan at Home Bodies told me to get and try. Um, you can see how hot it is. Uh, it comes with multiple tips. I have to change position. My feet are really not in good shape. Okay, I'm going to stand up. Good for the body to do that. Um, so, um, there's so, so a lot of different tips. This tip is probably not the best tip to use. Um, but I'm going to do it anyways. Because I don't want to let it cool down and have to change it. That is the only thing I can say that I hate about wood burning is when you're ready to use a different tip, you have to turn it off, let it cool down, and then take it off, and then put on the new one, and then let that one heat up. And that's just like, gosh, it's a lot of steps just to change your tool out. I guess I could get two, but that would be hard to justify since I'm constantly splurging on art supplies. I no longer binge buy clothing and I no longer binge buy books. I have a lot of books I need to read that I already have. But I do have a very big problem with buying art supplies. And, and I use them problem is, like we were talking about earlier, every five minutes I adopt a new hobby. So every five minutes I'm like, alright, time to get all the gear to do this. So I'm trying to make a little mid-year resolution to stop buying art supplies until I literally am out of it and I need it. Like, you can of course buy another sketchbook if you need it, but no more starting new things until you do things with the things you have. So, that's been cool. Cassie, is my sister watching? Is my sister watching this? She probably like jumped in and then jumped out because she was like, oh gosh, it's my little sister. Just kidding, she's really nice. I think she's the nicest of all of us. I'm, me and my sister Shaylee are like the evil stepsisters, and she's like Cinderella. Both in beauty and in personality. Um, so I'm just like pressing down. You can use like one corner if you don't want to have to like make a straight line. And kind of do that. But you press and you drag and you press and you drag and you try to get it to look smooth and I haven't done it in a while so it's kind of difficult but um, it's fun. I know, I love how dainty these legs are. So cute. Thank you. I just do them real skinny. And then I'm going to turn it and do her little belly. Hello Judy, welcome. This is a uh, live two of two tonight. After this, I'm going to call it quits, but um, we've done some watercoloring. We've done some pastels for funsies, and um, I showed everybody a little bit of the embroidery I've been working on, and now I'm showing everybody my process start to finish. Well, probably not finish, but start to middle with wood burning. And um, I'm just getting the rough outline in there first. And then, like I said, changing out tools takes a while when you only have one wood burner. So I will probably finish this and post the finished results with all the shading with the different tips um, at a later time. But at least you get to see how you sketch it out and how you outline. And this is like, I'm not gonna say this is easy because I have uh, kind of butchered a few 
pieces of wood in the past. But I'm going to say it's you can do it. If you've ever like wanted to try something like this, the the materials to start this hobby aren't that expensive. Um there's been worse like hobbies where the cost like adds up really quickly between all the materials. This one um blur that out. This one, not so bad. Um, you get your wood burner. I think it was about $30. Um, you can buy a little case of tips. Um, I think I bought everything on Amazon. Got free shipping, of course, with the Amazon Prime. And then um, you get your wood. I think I got mine at Michael's. And then you can start with just one piece if you want and go from there. I don't know like how I've never used like just random natural wood I've found. I've always used like these little plaques. But I'm sure you can make your own for pretty cheap. Um I don't know if there's like if these are like treated a certain way where they're safe to wood burn. Um one thing I will say I asked um I asked Regan if she's ever stained her wood, and I can't remember if she said yes or no, but she did say, if you're going to stain it, stain it after, because since you're literally burning the wood, you don't want to be burning chemicals, the chemicals from the stain all up in your face. So, um, if you're going to stain it, stain it afterwards. I haven't tried it yet, but that would be fun to try. So little and tiny. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Let me just go ahead and do this. The angle's pretty tough. I've never wood burned something so tiny with such a large tip, but it's kind of fun. And you know what I think I'm going to do with this one? I think I'm going to paint it with acrylic paint after this and paint those flowers paint that baby deer and paint um, some leaves and stuff around it or maybe I'll paint like a whole scene behind it paint the grass that'd be fun um, let me go ahead and do the hooves okay so here's a trick for the hooves I'm gonna do hopefully it'll work out press and drag and they're just gonna be like long unrealistically long hooves um, just to kind of give it some some cuteness. We can meet up on Thursday. Um, I love the full cup too. For those of you who are seeing Ray's comment, the full cup is this little coffee house in um, Weatherford, the first time I ever went, this is a strange story you probably don't know about Brittany and I, and I hope she doesn't mind me sharing. Brittany from Friendly Kelpie, and also from Unicorn Stitches, is my sister-in-law, and she's awesome. And I, this is the weird part of the story, Cody, my husband, did not know he had a sister, a half-sister, until I was nine months pregnant. She reached out to me and she said, uh, your husband is my brother. And I was like, what? And um, she she was brave enough. I mean, that would, that would take guts to be like, hey, I'm like related to you. You're my relative. And um, so she was just like brave enough to be like, hey, like he's like my family. I'd like to meet y'all. And I was like, a yes. So we immediately met her. Oh, it's about to end. Anyways, long story short, we met up with her at the Full Cup for the first time we went there. And so it's kind of a really cool, like, sentimental place for me. And um, to answer your question, Ray, yes, I will be there on Thursday. I will make sure of it. So, 10 seconds left. Here's what I got done. I'll share the finished results with you.